about her visit uh, a couple weeks uh, in advance, and I talked uh, to everybody and made sure that all the facilities were up to uh, where they needed to be. What Ian does is uh, she goes through, she, she went through uh, some of our written policies to make sure that they complied with state statutes. Uh, she's a resource for Maine Municipal, and uh, areas that she found uh, were deficient, um, she's going to compile a list and give them to us, and we are going to have a chance to go through them. Uh, if we ever get audited uh, by OSHA or by the State Labor Board, um, you know, we're going to be in better shape because of, uh, of the tour that she went through. On the plus side, I will note, uh, she toured the uh, wastewater treatment plant, the mm -hmm. outfall building on Water Street, and the Town Garage. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't go through here? No, she's coming mm -hmm. back in there. She didn't have oh. time to, to go through everything. Um, what she found at the uh, wastewater plant, um, some of the uh, items on our uh, lockout tagout, minor changes, uh, she was happy with what we had. Uh, she noted uh, we weren't making uh, regular inspections of the eyewash, eyewash stations, which is the state mandate. Yeah. Uh, some of the things that she picked out and she sent me a bunch of information on, um, a lot of the stuff I wasn't familiar with. And uh, what we talked about was uh, we discussed the uh, staff meetings that we had. Uh, and we both agree that just inserting, you know, some of these documents, uh, like documenting an IY station, and just going over it and just taking one or two subjects for a staff meeting uh, is a good way to, you know, move us forward and at the same time not overwhelm. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the uh, other issues that she did find, um, some of the heaters down at the wastewater treatment plant, there was no guards in the back. They were less than 10 feet off the ground. Uh, simple fix, we discussed, uh, you know, the possibilities include, uh, you know, some kind of screen that we could attach. Um, she went down to the outfall building. Uh, there were two lights, fluorescent lights there that weren't covered. Uh, she recommended uh, you can get bulbs that have a plastic casing. You know, uh, a lot of it was, you know, little things. But if OSHA comes through, it's you know, it, it's yeah, their it's job that, yeah. Very educational. Very, yeah. yeah, very good. And, you know, the big thing that she stressed right up front is she's on our side. She works for Main Mutual and to help us. Mm -hmm. uh, she went down to the public works garage. Yeah. Uh, her first words were, oh my. <laughs> very but, diplomatic. But when she went through, uh, she did comment uh, that the work area that the boys had was very neat. Uh, some of the things she found down in the garage um, was that the step ladders uh, did not have the uh, yeah, the class the rating, stickers, the class rating, the weight mm -hmm. rating. Yeah. Uh, we talked about you know the possibility of you know using some kind of paint marker or something that would identify what the rating was that was easily uh, visible. Uh, ladder inspections have to be done on a regular basis. She sent me up the forms for those. Uh, we had a outlet that didn't have a GFI. Uh, reset on it. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to work on getting that changed. Uh, bottle jacks have to be inspected on a regular basis. Uh, got the paperwork on that. And, you know, like we said before, I mean, just take one or two of those items, put that in a safety meeting, go over the paperwork, how to fill it out. Um, but all in all, she, she did comment that, uh, you know, the work areas were neat, the work areas were proficient, uh, the MSDS sheets were where you could see them. Um, it, it, it was a good, it was a productive visit. She also gave you some information on um, grants that were available for training and that type of thing? Uh, MMA has uh, an area on the website where there is money available for training for safety. Uh, like if we wanted to do a course on confined space entry, mm -hmm. uh, we could put in for it. Uh, the other thing is we've been talking about a uh, tripod uh, in case the uh, sewer employees had to be lifted out of the manhole. Right. And we looked at the cost, and some of the costs were, you know, the initial ones were between six and eight grand. Yep. Uh, we found some more. Uh, they were between three and five. And uh, the weight ratings are where we need them to be. Mm -hmm. 
um, and I'm looking on this further, uh, but this is something that in our discussions we talked about that we could apply for money from Maine Municipal and you know they would pick it up uh, on a two to one ratio. So a three thousand dollar item, you know, we would have to come up with a thousand. Um, so I mean there's no question that our our people's uh, safety is worth that. Whether oh, we had to pay for the whole thing or not. That, I mean, we were looking at putting it in as a line item in the budget. Um, but if we can get some help with it, then yeah, we'll, we can we'll, we'll definitely take the help. What little help is out there? Yeah. yeah. Sure. We've used it in the past too. We used it for training. Uh, we sent a person to leadership training many years ago, and they paid the whole stipend yeah. for it. Um, the Washington County Leadership Council. So they are a good resource. Yeah, please yeah. continue pursuing that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. um, next item is the uh, S turn at South Quebec Road. Uh, this is something you know, that we've been pushing on a regular basis. Um, there are some erosion issues at the uh, at the base, and uh, I got a letter from uh, the DOT, and I did a follow up with Sean Davis. Uh, he was the uh, person who uh, did the engineering work on the project down in South Quebec where they did the riprap down in the bog. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, he gave me a lot of information uh, on what's coming up. The money for uh, the s term project is approved. Uh, right now, they are contacting the uh, property owner uh, just to make sure they've got permission uh, to go down and do the work. And, you know, we both are in agreement that if it's my property washing out the sea, and you're going to do something to help me? Do it. Yeah. Uh, the next item is, um, you know, they're going to be looking for any historical properties in the vicinity. That's, he said it's just procedural, something that they do. Yeah. I don't believe that that's an issue. Uh, following that, they're going to go to the Army Corps of Engineers for the permitting process. Mm -hmm. That's where it's going to take some time. He says it'll be about a three to four month process. Mm -hmm. uh, not expecting any issues there. The final stage would be to put the work out to bid, and they plan on hiring a contractor. Um, they're not expected to interrupt uh, travel on South Quebec Road. Mm -hmm. um, we remember last summer uh, they cut uh, the portion of South Quebec that they were working on down to one lane because uh, the roadway was unsafe. They're not expecting to do that there. Uh, most of the work is expected to take place off the roadway. Uh, they're not expecting to have public hearings as they did on the other project. However, they would have one if requested by the town. Mm -hmm. uh, John Devon, who is the engineer in charge, said when it gets close to the construction phase, he'd be available to come to a uh, slotman's meeting to update the board of what to expect. Uh, so this is a work in progress. Um, we finally have some progress from all yeah. about the planning. They're looking at uh, a time frame for construction between October and November. And that would give them time to go through the, the uh, process for the permits. And now, this project is going to eliminate the guide wire anchor that is laying on the bank because of the erosion, and Bangor Hydro is going to do what? I contacted Bangor Hydro uh, earlier and told them about the issue. I haven't gone out to see if they've followed up, but they did say that they were going to send a crew out. So okay. I assume, is that still... Well, yeah, there's a, the the, uh, the um, auger anchor that was in the bank, which held the guy, wi guy wire, uh, isn't doing anything. Okay. Well, the bank, uh, so it's it's just laying on the bank. It's gone. All the dirt it was in is gone. And I'm wondering what it's... Without that keeping the pole on the other side of the road, what is their solution to doing that, or if after this project is done, will they re-anchor? Re-anchor, okay. Yeah, they'll they'll know until they see what the Army plan or the state. Mm, okay. If they don't put a lamb back, it's not going to be right. screwed. Yeah, the Army Corps probably would yeah. work with them, too. Okay. I'm right. sure once they, they fix the erosion, the more, then Bangor Hydro will come fix their coal, because the last thing they wanted their coal to fall over, and right. they lost their money. Mm. Mm. I would strongly suspect that the Army Corps will contact Bangor Hydro. Okay. Work together. All right. If they have another issue. 
Um, I wanted the uh, board to just kind of update them. Um, for a number of years, uh, Les Basile has been our animal control officer. Uh, he's having some health issues, and he's uh, currently unavailable. Um, I did some uh, work, I uh, contacted Machias, and I asked him who they use. Uh, they use a gentleman named uh, Kevin Nelson, he's from Millbridge. Uh, he, he is a Machias police officer and he pro provides animal control services to a number of communities. Uh, he told me he has over 20 years experience as an animal control officer and he has a genuine concern for the welfare of the animal. Uh, he informed me that uh, communities, some communities pay by a stipend and mileage, uh, while other, others prefer a, an on-call at $20 an hour. Uh, he can be contacted by going through the RCC. So if somebody has an animal control issue, they would contact RCC. Um, if we decided to use Kevin, uh, and then RCC would call Kevin, he would respond. One issue that he discussed is uh, we need to have an animal holding facility. Uh, he identified the small animal clinic in Ellsworth as a possibility. I know this is one that Lester used. Uh, he also said he had space in Perry and Callis for short-term stays. Now, are we still under contract with no. Lester? Well, Le Lester was doing it on an all-call basis. As, uh, Lester indicated to you that he wanted to. Uh, he said that if we oh. decided to go into a different direction, he would understand it. But what I'm wondering, though, is if we are, don't we already have the animal holding facility on and somehow being taken care of because we have the, we Lester. have the service provided from Lester? No. Well, Lester had some places that he, he, he would use um, and he would take care of it. Were they in Washington County? Yeah, he, he had one in Perry and I know he used a small animal clinic in Ellsworth. Um, would I, would you look into the one in Perry? Yeah, I know some, some pet owners, it's just like your children. If their dog was running wild and then they find out that it got taken all the way to the Hooskow in Ellsworth, they're going to be like, why'd you take my dog all the way over there? Think about it. I mean, well, it depends on availability. Mm -hmm. no, they they try really. to stay as close as they can, but if their Perry is full and the other one is full, then they go to the small animal clinic in Ellsworth. They also have an office in, um, the small animal clinic has an office in four, at Four Corners. They're, you know, a reputable. If you got a runaway dog, so something, something's going to be done with it. You got to do it. Right? I mean, right. you got to take it to where. Do you have it in the budget? I think the budget is some. I think, yeah, as we, I we, remember, we, you pay like a, a yearly amount to the clinic or whatever so that they will take the animals. Um, we used to do it through the police department, and I think um, Donnie used to take Donnie care of it. Yeah, Donnie used to take care yeah. of that uh, out of the sheriff. But it's not huge. Um, we should make sure we get agreements in place. That way. Yeah. Yep. Because so, you don't want to be trying to figure that stuff out when he's got oh, a no. dog. Trying to think. Oh, right. No, got to it <laughs> so it sounds like we need, we need to think about uh, having Kevin do this until do we need to make this decision at town meeting? Well, I think for the following year, but I think right now you need a you oh, need a decision because yeah. last year is out of commission right now. Oh, I'll make a motion. Before? Before? Can oh. I say something? Yes, yes, yes. go right ahead. Um, I definitely agree we need to have something in place. But moving forward, are there any um, requirements or requirements? Uh, yeah. Things that we look at for people to be qualified to do this they and have to go to yeah. the training, the ACO training. And how yeah. often is that held? I mean, I just think moving forward, we should look for someone local because if someone's coming in from Millbridge and I've had a dog or something on my lawn or something's happening and they're coming <laughs> in from Millbridge, whatever happens is going to be well over. 